So I have a revelation here, and that is that park and garden are 46 and 49, differ by 3, so they have the same plus 1 offset. Right across the street is Rowley Park, which is love plus love plus love. And in Rowley Park is Rowley Garden, which is therefore love plus love plus love plus 3, to the glory of the Trinity. So this is a huge revelation because the word park and garden are so huge in the story of God. Mankind was created in a garden. This is one of the kingpin words in the story of God. Garden equals 49, which is plus 1 over the nearest multiple of 3, 48. Um, park is 45, 46, which is plus 1 over the nearest multiple of 3, 45. But both differ by 3. Okay, So, um, uh, garden is literally park plus 3. So right across the street, to the glory of God, is Routley Park. R-O-U-T-E-L-Y-P-A-R-K, which adds perfectly to 162, which is 54 times 3, love plus love plus love. And you can find the three loves. The first three letters equal love number one. And in Routley Park is Routley Garden, <laughs> which is therefore three points higher. It's just like the periodic table of the elements, where you align elements that have the same offset, okay, that then combine with elements that have the same reverse offset to make, you know, typically it's eight electrons in the outer shell in many in chemical combinations, but uh, in the case of the English language, it's threes. That's what we see de facto. Um, and so, uh, Rowley Park, love plus love plus love. Rowley Garden, Love plus love plus love plus three. And so you can now imagine all the parks and gardens all over the world. Another example that divides by three would be a royal park. Think of a kingly estate. Think of all the gardens of Europe and kings that have lived that had a royal park, a royal garden. So royal park divides by three, okay, because royal is plus two, park is plus one. And then a royal garden is three points higher. So, and this perfectly parallels, aha, the words Jesus and Christ. Jesus and Christ are both plus two numbers that differ by three. Jesus is 74, it equals Messiah, equals gospel, equals cross, equals English, equals gematria, preacher, the king, all these famous words, energy, element, aurora. Um, and then Christ is three points higher. So the offset for the number 3 is the same. Jesus, 74. Christ, 77. Well, park, 46. Garden, 49. The offsets of both of these are plus 2, differing by 3. The offsets of both of these are plus 1, differing by 3. We've just proven mathematically that Jesus Christ and the triune God take the glory for every park and garden that is named in the story of God. And now you can go on a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous magic carpet ride through all the names of all the greatest gardens and parks in all the world in all the story of God. And uh, to the glory of God, the one that is right across the street from me, that is closest to where I currently stand, is Routley Park. Routley Park is triple love, and then Routley Garden is three points higher, 165. Love plus love plus love plus three. And uh, I pray adventure that you can find the three loves plus the three. Uh, actually, I don't think you can in Routley Garden particularly because you can't pop off a minor three points, but you get the idea. Um, but now you can take a magic carpet ride through all the parks and gardens that are named in all the story of God and uh, see more of these beautiful loves and multiples of three in the famous gardens of the world. Um, pretty awesome. And um, so, very, very cool. Um, very awesome. Park and garden solved. And there are many of course, parks, of course, that have a garden on the inside of them. Like this is just so common in the story of God. Where you go to some famous park, maybe it's Central Park in New York City, and of course there's a garden in the park. The park, of course, is a garden. There's stuff growing in it that technically classifies it as a garden. <laughs> so not surprisingly, park and garden have the same offset differing by three. So, um, you know, Central Park and Central Park Garden, you know, Central Garden, you get the idea. Um, and many places will have a botanical garden inside the larger park 
Um, so if you say, oh, let's go to Rutley Park, and then inside Rutley Park is Rutley Garden, or all the names all over the world history. So uh, this is just too loaded. This, this board is just too loaded. Let's, let's just get this in a writing on the board. It's most importantly to have the spoken words we've already done. So park and uh, 46 plus 1. Now, I personally think that this has a slight indication that a garden is even better than a park. You can create a park that's just an open field, but it takes a lot of love to take care of a garden within the park. More love required to take care of. Remember, mankind was created in a garden, and his job was to take care of a gardener, the occupation. That's the 72 of triple triple eights. Um, so garden equals 49 plus 1. They differ by 3. And so, for the record, the official name of said park and garden that I just came from, today's Sunday, August 16th, is Routley, right across the street. I just came from there, and in particular, I just came from the garden. Divine story on the number of plots in this garden, there's exactly 60 different plots that have been taken by the residents surrounding the area. There are 30 beds split in twos, 30 times 2 is 20 plots of garden land, soil, for the people to plant whatever they want in. Um, and uh, that is totally divine. I preached on the divineness of that when the garden, when the park opened a while ago. And uh, it was this year that it opened, 2015, king number for three. Um, 15 times 15, 2015, um, when you speak it in text. but. 60 plots, holy equals 60, equals word, equals diamond. Mm -hmm. It's just two kings. Uh, and so when you say holy, 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 that's 60, 60, 60, 108. So, Rowley Park, okay, adds to love plus love plus love. Let's uh, make a little room here. So just, just so it's nicely on the board here. So Rowley Park, therefore, is triple love, love plus love plus love. And then Rotley Garden is there for triple love plus three. We'll talk about an obvious ordained three fest for the glory of the Trinity. Rotley Park, love plus love plus love, 162. Rotley Garden, love plus love plus love plus three. So a garden is three points higher than a park. In my opinion, that means that a garden is greater than a park. It takes more love to plant a garden and maintain a garden than it does to just simply spread out a nice green space um, for a park. So, but the best of the best, and given the divine ordinance that's sitting right across the street from me in Motley Park and all these numbers revelations that are happening simultaneously, is a park with a garden. <laughs> so you got your nice green space, you got your nice walking areas, but then you've also got your intimate planting zones and cultivations and seeds and fabulous, interesting stuff to look at. I was marveling, there's some huge sunflowers out there, just massive, like, the head is just so weighty. You're like, how is this thing supported? Um, and I was marveling at how every single one of the uh, florets on a sunflower face is a five-pointed star. And five is, of course, the third prom. So the number of fingers are three. Okay, three. Every single floret, just five, which is the third prom. And of course, the phrase, the very famous phrase, gold star, divides by three. Um, but. Uh, and C equals 33, equals name, equals amen, and equals bird, and all the rest of, you can just solve all sorts of stuff. Um, but, uh, ooh, another plus, wait a second, oh no, plot. Uh, the word plot um, divides by three all by itself. So you can add plot into this, park, plot, garden, plot, and you can just keep building. Um, but now, just, just consider how big this is. I mean, the word park and the word garden are so huge in the story of God. So let's look at the letters now and marvel at similarities between park and garden. Now that we know that there's a totally divine, obvious, obvious mathematical correlation between park and garden, let's stare a little longer at the letters and see what comes to us. The most obvious thing I see is that it's got the famous plus one letter in the front. So literally, the, the, the finality of park divides by three. 
and the finality of garden divides by three. And this famous plus one is everywhere. Everywhere in the story of God. The word God itself is plus one front and back. Jesus plus one front and back. Very famous large words in geography. Africa. It's really obvious because every center letter divides by three and you've got the A which is one front and back. Plus one front and back. Same thing with the word America. Austria. Okay. Plus ones front and back with gold train of threes in the center. Um, so that's clearly what jumps out at me. Park and garden. 7 plus 1. 16 plus 1 over the next multiple 3. And then, so the gold train of 3's is right here. So what's cool about that is that you will see this plus 1 character knit together with a plus 2 in the prefix of what the name of the park or garden is to make multiples of 3. That will often have like direct chain linking right here. Okay. So for example, out of my own mouth I gave an example of a royal park or a royal garden. Throughout history, gardens have been uh, planted by kings and queens alike. Well, the word royal has three letters that divide by three and two letters that are both plus one. Right there. So the Y and the A, the two plus ones, will get married or will knit together with this plus one here to have three plus ones. And so the whole thing will then divide by three in nine letters. A royal park. Okay. And then a royal garden then therefore divides by three. This, this front letter is treated like a puzzle piece that clicks in perfectly with these letters out here, these guys that make plus two for a multiple of three. Royal Park, Royal Garden, Roughly Park, Roughly Garden. Um, so what else do we see between Park and Garden? Well, the next two letters are identical, A-R. Park, Garden. Park, Garden. Parks and Gardens. Aha! When we add S to the end of this, it's an S and a K make a multiple of three. Okay. K and N are both plus two. That's divine because an S is plus one. So we talk about parks and gardens, and that's really obvious. Because K and N differ by three. So miracle of miracles, the first part of parks, the PAR, equals garden. So everything up until the last letter equals. And it's just the last letter that gives it the, the three points difference between park and garden. N is 14. That's three points higher than K, 11. So the beginning of these two words equals P-A-R equals G-A-R-D-E. Phenomenal. Is that all on the board? Can you see that? Yes, you can. As long as you can hear the voice, that's fine. So when we write parks, the K and the S get married to make 30. Gardens, the N and S get married to make three points higher, 33. Glory to the Trinity. That's amazing. Uh, I'm already satisfied. So then, it, interestingly, in both words, the only letter that divides by three is the famous R. Man, this will just boost your respect for R's. <laughs> you know, once you know you're staring at some very precious kingly words in the story of God, the garden. That's like what man was created in. And we're just seeing the perfect parallelism between the word park. And there's only one letter that divides by three in the center of both of these words. In fact, it occupies the third position in both of them. R. The famous R in three strokes. One, two, three. Talk about the variety of different components. You've got a vertical stroke, you've got the curvy stroke, and you've got the diagonal stroke. One, two, three. R is 18 divided by three. And that's the famous R on copyright symbols all over the world. Okay. So the third letter in is R. 18. And then you've got a 9 here, D-E. 9, so you've got half a love in the center of garden there. Um, <clears throat> so obviously the P and the K knit together to make 27. And the G and the N knit together to make um, 21. Three is there. You can treat the A as the plus one if you want to. Parks. So park. I mean, this is crazy because there's so many of them. Everyone wants a piece of the word park. It's like Disneyland Park. Everyone wants a piece of the word park. Because we're all attracted to park. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, what else? D-E-A-R. Parks and gardens. Amazing. 
Um, so what does all this add to before this final letter, the PAR, that is equal? That's uh, 16, 17, plus 18 is 35. So this prefix of both is 35, which glorifies number 3, because it's a simple set of the third prime. 5, 3. Parks and gardens, that's so cool. Um, amazing. And then uh, the word uh, flower is plus one, just like park and garden. You know, so you start drawing all these, you know, now you get words, obvious words that are associated with this and just see how they compare. For example, a flower. Grass is plus one. Green parallels the word grass. Green is a very famous word. <laughs> I mean, anything can be green. Well, the green grass. Green perfectly parallels the word grass. Five letters, you know, G plus one in front of the threes, you get the idea. So green is plus one. Park is plus one. Garden is plus one. Flower is plus one. Are you seeing how the divinely ordained words of God in English, you know, fall into a sequence that glorifies the number three? So flower, you get a plus one. Flower is, you know, um, so flower parallels park. What is flower? Let's just get it. 27 plus 18, 45, 51, 56 plus 23 is uh, 79, I believe. Atomic number of gold. So uh, how does flower differ from, differ from garden? That's uh, 9 points to 70, 20, 30 points exactly. So flower is 30 points higher than garden. Flower is 27 points higher than park, or sorry, 33 points higher than park. So obvious three is there. Garden is three points higher than park. Flower is 30 points higher than garden. Flower is 33 points higher than park. So you're getting it. You're getting it. It's like the periodic table of the elements, how there's an order. And these elements over here that have a plus one offset love to combine with these elements over here that have a minus one offset, and everything's happy. <laughs> and that's what we're seeing with the words of the story of God in English. Um, the park, the garden. Um, it's basically a source of happiness to uh, more people in the story of God than anything else I know. A walk in the park. A walk in the garden. Like it was in Eden. Preferably, you're taking a walk with the consciousness of God, and you're saved in Jesus' name, and you're doing what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. You are walking. Remember, the garden is just a setting. The personal relationship is the important thing. Um, you listening to the voice of God, and or also responding to him, is the point. The garden, and or the park, is just the second. The eternal souls that are in said setting are the focal point. And focal point divides by three. It's an awesome, obvious gem. Um, point equals Jesus. Parks and gardens. That's huge. Parks and gardens. Like, now you're just like, man, now, now I know that God likes parks. And now I know that God likes gardens. God is love. Uh, why don't we create like a world-class garden that is dedicated to hearing the voice of God as we walk our way through it in silence? We're creating all sorts of silly stuff. God created the garden for us back in Eden. Like that was the king, the garden, like paradise. Why in the world are we spending all sorts of ridiculous resources and stuff creating everything except gardens? Like we could have created a world-class garden a long time ago in Canada, in the USA, that was dedicated for hearing the voice of God like Adam and Eve did a long time ago. What is wrong with us? Why have we not done it? Why are we not doing it? There's no excuse. It's 
time to actually do something for love between God and man. Create a world-class garden, perhaps, combined with a world-class park that is dedicated to people walking and listening to God. The park has a silence policy for most of the hours that it's open. For the whole point of people coming and walking in said space is to simply listen for the voice of God. Um, parks and gardens. That's huge. That's huge. So we've God owns these words, and we've just proven it mathematically. Everyone wants a piece of the word park. Everyone wants a piece of the word garden. Because if you plaster that on the name of your thing, people will like it. Because human beings want the piece of a park. They want to go to parks. They want to go to gardens. It's love. Peace. Gardens. Parks and gardens. This is huge. And you can, like, soil is plus one. Flower is plus one. 55. Soil differs from flour by 24 triple And then you look at the, the difference. Once you have the, you know, you know they align and you know they're similar in nature, then check out the difference for the number three between these obvious terms. And you'll get very nice, beautiful threes, you know. Remember the word seed equals 33. It equals name. It equals all men. And the name is king. Well, everything starts as a seed. I started as a seed. <laughs> Every person started as a single seed. You're just like, this is crazy. Crazy awesome is what it is. Um, but for all of our, this, it, I think it's, we can do better. It's a disgrace given the amount of manpower we have, the amount of people we have, the amount of time that we have, the amount of land that we have, the amount of seeds that we have, the amount of gardening intelligence that we have, the amount of everything that we have. And we haven't created one single garden that is of world-class nature, that is dedicated to mankind walking in the presence of God, listening for his personal voice. I'd say that's somewhat cringeworthy. I'd say we can do better than we've done up until now. <laughs> Regarding, you know, what we're doing with our time and how we're investing ourselves. Ay, ay, ay. So parks and gardens. Um, you know, from the garden to the mountain. Garden is plus one, mountain is plus two. It's like, they combine. Anyways, um, so that's cool. So Rudley Park, triple love, Rudley Garden, triple love, plus three. And then so if you put those two together, you get six loves plus three. And I just, you, you can come to Rudley Park and visit Rudley Garden as I speak. Like, this is real. This is like a real story. It's, it's like real, happening right now, 3D. Like, this is God's story. This is not like a fairy tale. This is not Lord of the Rings or some fictional novel. There's Rotley Park, like within five minutes walking distance of where I stand. And that's what God has ordained for his mathematical glory. And I just came from there. And it was a pure pleasure, just walking in the sunlight. It's just before, what time is it? It's just after 7 p.m. It's 7.15 p.m. It's all parks and gardens. There is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace for the wicked. Okay? Peace is priceless. Peace is the gift of God in Christ. You can't look after a garden and enjoy it without being saved. History testifies of that. You can't have a sinful man that isn't redeemed in Christ that has the patience to enjoy a garden. It's impossible. He's at war with God. Okay? He's a restless sinner. He's not saved. He's not cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. It's impossible for him to walk in peace. Okay? Um, remember the famous phrase, peace on earth parallels peace in the heart. By divine orders, the letters of earth are equal to the letters in heart. You can't have peace on earth without having peace in the hearts of men through Christ Jesus. Okay? Um, and uh, so I want to preach briefly 
Um, I'm going to start a new video for it actually. I'm, I want to preach on the difference between the unredeemed and the redeemed. Um, the godless soul and the Christ-centered soul. And the main difference is the one is very egocentric and the other one is God-centric. So we're going to start a new video for that. That's awesome. Parks and Gardens solved in this video.